Okay, so I want to touch base here on some of the color updates for Mari 4.7 v4. So I have a Macbeth short here and uh, let's see here if I project this. So I've created here a uh, color, 16-bit color channel. Yeah, so let's uh, take this image here, my Macbeth. Uh, let's project this here onto this guy here. So let's just stamp it down and project it down here so we have some information so there's first uh, a few nodes we can uh, take a look at let's go to flat shader to just look at it, this color here so we have two new nodes here so we have this one view as color and view as scalar so these are nodes uh, mainly used for visualizing uh, uh, a different color context so if I, uh, I've projected this into a, a diffuse channel. So if I now hook this out, uh, this one, the, the view as color and look through this node here, you see it's going to become darker. And if I connect this one and uh, look through this one, it's going to use uh, the regular a lot there. So what does this tell us? Yeah, so essentially I have color nodes here. And as you can see here, when I look in the scalar node, we can see that this uh, uh, color is linearized. This is kind of the linear representation. Uh, and as its color is going to be linearized down, and this is kind of the, the Mori working space. And uh, if we, because if I go here to my settings and look here at my underlying color management my 16 and 32 bit float data is mori float aces cg and uh, therefore when i look at the view of scalar my um, underlying color space the aces cg is essentially what this one is going to pick up so let's take a look at projecting uh, this here to a uh, another type of uh, channel like a scalar so let's make a scalar it's gonna create a scalar and tick this box and uh, let's create now actually a, a gray here and take a look okay i want to use now the same uh, color chart here and you see here stamp this down and bake it and now as it's a uh, scalar you can see here uh, it looks kind of okay here using my uh, raw values but uh, let's take a look here uh, if I'm gonna view this I can view it as view as color if I want to here just to visualize how this one will look in a color context rather than a scalar context and you see here now it's, it's a bit overly bright here and that's because my uh, uh, essentially my viewer lot here is applied now and we can now hook this back and view as color or view as scalar so these nodes it doesn't really alter the values it's just a way to tell uh, the viewer essentially if you're gonna view it in a color or a scalar context but we have now actually nodes that's more uh, used for switching context so let's say that uh, a prime example is in mori you can build something uh, like this for example uh, if i look at this color here you can build something you have projected this and that you want to reuse this in a in a scalar context but you want to take the information here in my paint node and reuse it in my scalar uh, channel that you also have created so let's do that and see what happens here on um, by default so we remember we have projected this using um, uh, colors and it's going to be essentially linearized under a hood and if i now uh, take this node here go to my over and look here in my scalar context it's essentially the same as i take here view as scalar uh, using this one it's going to be the same if I go to, back to my color you see I'm going to go to this view as scalar it's linearized 
But let's say now that we actually want to transform the values here into scalar values. So let's say we can we can go here, for example, if I uh, uh, sample, uh, let's actually sample this patch here, that's going to be 0.5 in value. If I sample this one here, let me take this one. Uh, it's going to be, I guess, a bit of a rounding here. Uh, but uh, it's close enough to point, uh, let's, let's just uh, prove that, yeah. 0.477, uh, let's take um, the raw pixels there. Uh, let's now, uh, if I go here to my uh, scalar and resample this one, you can see here, now my scalar values is, uh, let me see here, 0.93. So this one has actually been linearized. But let's say that we want to convert this now essentially to scalar. Now we have uh, scalar to color and color to scalar. So what you can do when you have this scenario, when you have something that you uh, projected in colors and you want to convert it into a scalar value and you reusing this node here in the two locations. So essentially we have a conflict here because this one is governing this one, but the scalar values here essentially is picked up and it is linearized by this one. So uh, the colors here is linearized, but you don't want to linearize them uh, double, have a double linearization. Uh, in the scalar value. So you can insert this one here. And now let's take a look here. When I'm looking here at my um, color to scalar, now if I sample this one, the gray value here will, will retain the same values as we would expect from the gray swatch there. So now it's essentially 4.7. Uh, so that, that's a way to essentially say, uh, I would insert th uh, this node here if I build uh, a uh, two streams using one color and one scalar. Whenever you bridge from the color into the scalar, I insert this color to scalar to transform this into the, the scalar values. And likewise, if I have a um, something like a, um, let's say, uh, Let's say that I, I create a, a value here, uh, a scalar value that I am using here. Let's say that we have 50% gray here, like so, scalar. But you wanna reuse this in the color context. You can now say scalar to color, and then you insert this one in your color and it will uh, be correct for the the color workflow as well so yeah that's some of the utility nodes we can use in in the no graph it's a bit uh, mind-boggling as usual when it comes to color management but the, the bottom line is this view transform nodes is doesn't actually uh, alter the values is just a way to more uh, visualize the context in the no graph and these color to scalar and scalar to color is actually uh, transpose or transform the color value so instead of being linearized from 0.5 on the, this gray swatch uh, when I sample it there it's uh, not uh, when I when I insert this node it's not going to linearize it down to 0.19 or something so the value, if you would have a 0.5 value in the color, it will be 0.5 value in the scalar. So yeah, that's kind of the nitty gritty of that. And another thing when it comes to color management here is uh, now if you have a bunch of textures, for example, if I insert uh, something like this, uh, some textures to my image manager, now we have a preset to uh, switch the color context or from scalar to color because I um, 
previously if I want to do a bunch of uh, let's say that I've imported a bunch of uh, textures and uh, the color space rules is not picked up and now they do the here at uh, most of them are picked up correctly so but let's say that you want to actually convert all of these into colors instead of the scalar if you select them here you can go right click and uh, uh, let's see set uh, image color space now we can go over here from as color or as scalar so that was also added in 4.7 v4 here uh, so let's uh, actually set them to color and now go here and see what happened and you can see here now it was unticked so this is not in that's incorrect for this one so let's go here and set to scalar for uh, these four okay so let's take a side step here and take a look at some color picking uh, let's uh, create here a, uh, a color and let's uh, look through this and uh, let's uh, project here some uh, color here let's gonna project this one on there and let's take a look here at uh, now creating a paint node a setting here to, to scalar and I want to now just pick a color here and see here that you can see here my context here is now turned off and it's set here to scalar we can see here and if I go back to this one and pick this one we can see here now it's uh, in this context of color and we can see the values here and uh, going going back here to this node and picking here we can see that the values slider is kind of dimmed down and we only see the the scalar so this is cool but there is one caveat in this 4.7 v4 if you do this and then uh, expect to uh, uh, use a color procedural so this is a bug uh, so I just want to point this out uh, so people doesn't get confused if you do here a color node here after you have picked a scalar so uh, the the picker here is actually in uh, let's see here sometimes you get in this strange uh, scenario where you you essentially pick a, uh, a color node and you go in here and essentially the the colors is still in scalar and this is not really correct so if you select this one and then go back yeah it's a bit of a headache now it's updated so there is um i filed a, I filed a bug report for this uh so because now the pop out uh, color picker here essentially uh, needs to be aware of the, the nodes, not just uh, the paint nodes, because we have a lot of uh, color information in uh, in procedural nodes as well, and that's kind of a, an issue. Uh, so hopefully we get a fix for this soon. I just wanted to point this out for people using 4.7 v4 and, and wonder sometimes if you uh, go to a procedural color like this after you have picked a scalar value, you might be in the situation where this scalar value is actually dimmed out here if on your color picker like like it is here now uh, so yeah then uh, uh, the solution is to uh, either select something with color at the moment I will think um, or hunt around a bit yeah it's not optimal I hope there is a fix for it soon so yeah uh, that's it about the the color picking sidestep I would say it's a sidestep not an upgrade it's uh, it's a slight upgrade in one scenario and uh, a real downgrade in the other scenario. So yeah, and that's it for this time. And if you want to support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. See you in the channel. Bye bye.